we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Give me a call at 713-526-5738. That is 713-526-KPFT. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Welcome to Politics Done Right on KPFT. My name is Egberto Willies, and I'm with my co-host Roxy. How you doing today, Roxy? I'm doing good, Ed- Egberto. We had a rather lively discussion last week. Yes, we did. And we had a lot of calls. We had a lot of people calling in. So I hope it we're just as successful as we were last. Yeah, week. you know, I mean, you know, when you get into those topics that get people riled up. So I don't know. I hope this one is going to get them riled up again. How was your your week? It was good. It was. Um... Oh, I okay. So I kind of indulged myself. I I saw two concerts in one week. In well, one excuse week. some more, por favor. Yes, and one of them was. Um, all right, I'm okay. Say what you will, but I saw Jay Z and Beyonce. Oh God. <laughs> yes. Well, my daughter would like you. Yes. So um, it was. That's that's what I did on my Friday night. And but it was fun. It was awesome. I saw another side of Houston. You know that because I've never been to Minute Maid. I've never really been in that area. Uh-huh. So I held another side of Austin, uh, Austin, Houston that I've never seen before. So it was fun. It was fun. So you had a great weekend. I did. I did. And then after that, I worked a lot. Well, I made up know, for all the money I spent on JC and Beyonce. That's all right. You make a lot of money. You just smile out there when you're doing your thing, yes. and you get all that money. So good for you. But Thank folks, you. remember this is a call-in show. The number is seven one three five two six. Five seven three eight. Again, that number is seven one three five two six KPFT. And Roxy loves to say it this way: seven one three Jam KPFT. And folks, please do remember that this is a this is community radio. We are supported by you guys, so please always remember if you can be so kind during my show or other shows to just get on to KPFT.org and click on the tip jar and put. Something in there saying, yes, we appreciate you guys doing the work. We appreciate you guys working to save America and giving people a voice. You know, uh, Roxy, um, I spent Wednesday through Sunday at the Netroots Nation 2014 uh, convention in Detroit, Michigan. It was a wonderful experience. Wonderful. Okay, I'm glad. I'm I because I don't hear the words "wonderful" in Detroit I know, really in the same but sentence. When you listen to the where we're going and you give us that input, you're going to see how great it was. You know. Well, that's okay. It's time for the weekly blog post. But here's a magical thing that we're going to do. Roxy did something great. I gave her a sign that said, hey, we're going to do the blog post. So you're going to hear that stuff again, folks. You know what? It's going to be a blessing because this intro that I have here is going to kind of read like a blog post. So you know what, Roxy? That was cool. Here we go. The Netroots Nation uh, convention is the amalgamation of liberal bloggers from throughout the country. It is a place where many politicians go to smooge with the liberal bloggers with the expectation of getting coverage and getting their message out. Most importantly, it is a convention for bloggers that communicate electronically to meet in the flesh, to party, to exchange ideas, to plan, and to network in order to form cooperating groups, actions, and alliances. This Netroots Nation convention was special, very special, Roxy. It was held in a city held hostage by the American plutocracy. So maybe that's kind of why you said, that doesn't sound too cool to me. So here it goes. It was held in a city where a group from outside Detroit helped give voices to Detroiters outside of Detroit. It was a convention that served a purpose. The governor of Michigan heard us. The mayor of Detroit heard us. The fraudulent appointed city manager of Detroit heard us. 
Is there any wonder it was announced today that the water shutoffs in the city would be suspended for two weeks for evaluation? When Americans work together from within and without, we cannot be beat. A united people will always prevail. So let's get busy, folks. It's time for the weekly blog post. And for first time listeners, that's kind of what we're bringing to you. know, I write this one long blog that I do every week, and that's how we bring it in. Anyway, I titled this one Netroots Nation 2014 Attendees Protested in Solidarity with Detroit Residents. This is important, folks, because this can happen anywhere. I got to the hotel just before 4 o'clock. That was on Wednesday. The excitement that is felt just before registration was palpable. I was ready. I'm in Detroit. Fly flying over Detroit looked like any other city. I was hoping to fly over some of the blight that the traditional media made synonymous with Detroit. It felt like the flight ensured no one saw it. Was that by design? The, the, the week before, from my keyboard in Kingwood, I got into an electronic altercation with a Detroit reporter. While watching MSNBC, Detroit reporter Hank Winchester and Detroit activist Maureen Taylor though, uh, were, were being interviewed. It turns out the Detroit Water Department began shutting off the water of all those who are $150 behind in their bill. They were shutting off the water of the poor, the unemployed, the disabled, and everyone in between at the rate of 3,000 disconnections per month. Of course, corporations owing thousands were left alone. The reporter went on MSNBC with a huge dog whistle. While he did state that some people really needed help, he felt it necessary to commit journalistic heresy. He showed his own prejudice. He said the following, Some of these people have a desperate need, reporter Hank Winchester said. They need help from state agencies. And by the way, caller, I see you. You'll be up next. But there are other people, and this is where it gets controversial, who simply don't want to pay their water bill, who rather spend money on cable. That's the dog whistle, folks. Some don't hear it. Some of us do. Anyhow, when I heard that, I immediately stopped writing my current blog, captured the interview, shortened it, and blogged it. Suffice it to say, the blog went viral. Many bloggers in Detroit and elsewhere had a field day with the reporter. He contacted me and accused me of staying here in Houston and changing stuff in Detroit because I edited the video, though I left the context perfectly reflective of what he said. As I walked from the hotel in Detroit to register, I wondered if this reporter, who had no problems getting on MSNBC, would spend the time to cover the large protest that Netroots Nation would participate in with the citizens of Detroit. After registering, I walked back to the Detroit Riverfront. Coincidentally, there was a Detroit activist, Michael Doc Holbrook, on his bike. I asked him for a video interview and he obliged. This is the only city in America, Michael Doc Holbrook said. Poor people ever had property on the riverfront, and they are taking that away. He said Detroit's real problem is the lack of leadership. Detroit is currently run by an omnipotent emergency manager appointed by the governor. Mr. Holbrook said that Detroit's emergency manager, Kevin Orr, the governor of Michigan's Nick, Rick Snyder, and the mayor of Michigan, Mike Dugan, went to law school together. You figure it out, Holbrook said, how this came to be. Friday was approaching. I made sure I had all my cameras ready. We, ha we hoped the rally would be as big as Detroiters told us it would be. They did not disappoint. And Netroots Nation did not disappoint. There were clearly over 1,000 protesters. In fact, given the 3,000 Netroots attendees and the hundreds from the city proper, the march seemed closer to 2,000. Of course, the traditional media claim 300 people in one report. I have hundreds of pictures to prove otherwise. It was great seeing Reverend Pinckney from Benton Harbor, Michigan, whose city was being virtually stolen from within another emergency man uh, from by another emergency manager. I met this guy at the Democracy Convention in Madison, Wisconsin. 
real good guy. It was great listening to labor unions, nurses associations, environmental groups, and every other organization coming to support Detroit, a city whose human capital was pilfered. And now the plutocracy wants it all. It was talk. It was great talking to a young woman activist at Peace Makita, who gave a passionate interview of what needs to be done in Detroit. The night before, Reverend William Barber electrified Netroots with his moral-based fusion third reconstruction policy message. It became the calling of the convention. It was the calling of the rally and protest. It said, and this is Reverend Barber, It is extreme and immoral to suppress the right to vote, Reverend Barber said. It is extreme and immoral to deny Medicaid for millions of poor people, especially people who have been elected to office, the poor, and the cut and earned income income taxes, and raise taxes on the poor and the middle class in order to cut taxes for the wealthy. It is extreme and immoral to use power to cut off people's water in Detroit. It is extreme and immoral to end unemployment for those who have lost jobs for no fault of their own. It is extreme and immoral to resegregate our schools and underfund our public schools. It is extreme and immoral for people who came from immigrants to now to have a mean amnesia and cry out against immigrants and the rights of children. It is mean, it is immoral, it is extreme to kick hardworking people when they are down. That is not just bad policy, it's against the common good and disregard for human rights. In fact, this kind of philosophy rooted in the policies of immoral deconstruction, if you look at them carefully, they are historically inaccurate, they are constitutionally inconsistent, they are morally indefensible, and they are economically insane. What I learned in Detroit was simple. It reconfirmed that our economic system has no heart. Sadly, our government that should ensure what that heartless system does not Rather, sadly, our government that should ensure that a heartless system does not harm is itself controlled by the heartless. The lack of morality is ever present in the way we, in the way we and the poor, our needy, our citizens, our citizens. It is time that we force our government, we the people, to return the policies, to return to moral policies. Come on in, my dear friend, Paul. Hey, Gretel, how you doing? Talk to me, my friend. Well, um, you had a, a mouthful there. <laughs> um, but um, one thing that I, I noticed, though, that granted, I really don't know a whole lot about what's going on in Detroit, mm-hmm. and I listened to everything that you said, mm-hmm. and there was a lot of interesting vocabulary that you used. Okay. Use words like virtually, mm-hmm. reflected. Mm-hmm. I use a lot of dramatic words. Okay. And what that tells me is that what I'm getting is your personal perspective. Okay. And in order to understand the situation, I would need to have the facts okay. without the emotion and perspective. Sure. And, and you know what I tell? Uh, it's interesting to me that you said that, right? Because there was another person that that I uh, that came onto my Facebook. I don't remember the person's name right offhand, and he listened to last week's show and he said, um, "You know, I would really like to. Um, you know, you really got to me because you know uh, you really came down hard on the right wing, and I, I I just think you were wrong. And you know, let me tell you how I am. I'd say, okay, fine, but what I'd like you to do is specifically tell me." where you think I'm either wrong or where you think I'm superfluous or where you think I'm overboard, and then we can then have the conversation to say, ah, okay, let's see if that was specific or not. So okay, if you're there's... talking about me? Yes, go ahead. No, no, I'm saying... Uh, I'm talking about you. Yes. Oh, wow. And, um, <laughs> okay. I, th- <laughs> I think what I did was... Um, and I'm used to hearing different talk show hosts, and I think actually that there's another talk show host um, I want to say it was Dan Aronson. Don't hold me to that. I can't remember. Okay. But um, I do remember that I was on his show one time, expressed my point of views, and right after we got done talking, he said the term racist right. And I'm just like, hey, you know, do you even know what you're talking about when you say something like that? 
That's I mean, that's like a, the typical leftist rhetoric. Let me let me stop I mean, a second yeah. here. I, I, will, I you will never hear me say racist uh, racist right. Okay, oh, that's Be, because there are several things here. Um, you know, I'm I'm you know I'm a left wing liberal. I'm as oh, left wing as you can go. Okay, that said. I go into left-wing liberal areas, I go into left-wing liberal organizations or whatever, and I also see racism there. So to, for me to just say a right-wing racist, I mean, there are also left-wing racists. I mean, I, I've, I've walked into uh, Daily, hell, I just got back from Daily Coast, and these are liberal bloggers from all over the country. And there are a few, a very minute few, that... Uh, I, 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 I'm not going to call them racist, but I'm going to say that the, the treatment I got was rather less than. So, I mean, look, I, I don't even play the, the, that, that part of the game. If someone is overtly racist with dog whistles, I'll call you out. But that's as far as I'm going to go. So one, of the, one thing that you did say, and I, excuse, excuse me if I, if I pause, I'm hearing like an echo of myself, which throws me off a little no bit. No problem. Um. You mentioned, and unfortunately, I don't really know the details on mm -hmm. this, uh, something about the GOP last week saying the government does not work. And I know that there's a whole, like, almost stereotype going on going on with that, even that, that extends to the Tea Party, which I do actually happen to be a member of, which mm -hmm. is highly understood and misquoted by, by the left. But... um. I'd like you to elaborate on on your quote on that. That the government doesn't work? Yes. Okay, I mean, it is simple. Look, let me tell you. First of all, when we say the government doesn't work, we mean the, gov the, the portion of the government that isn't working. Of course, Social Security still gets paid. Medicaid still gets paid. Medicare still gets paid. All of that is working fine. The nice, good social programs continue to work as designed. They work fine. Your grandmother still gets that check at the end of the month for her social security, which has likely kept her out of poverty as it was designed to do. Medicare, uh, those people over 65 that are on Medicare, they can always go to the doctor. It continues to work as designed. Medicaid, uh, not as well, mostly because states are sort of uh, are problematic in implementing it. For all those states that have implemented if Obamacare, uh, Medicaid expansion has saved many lives. For those states that didn't, it is categorically true that people have already lost their lives. Now, what isn't well, really working? What isn't I, re oh, you Did you want to interrupt me for a minute, sir? I, I'm sorry. You, you, you said something that just caught my attention. Go ahead. Um. I know this is. <laughs> I find it's funny because you're about as far left. Yes, as I, I am. am. Far right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I am actually highly critical mm -hmm. of the Affordable Care Act. And you sh let me tell. You, let me, I, I need to interrupt you for one reason here because it is okay to be critical of the Affordable Care Act. It is also okay to not want socialized medicine it is all which that isn't it is also okay to not like this particular any of these things my problem with a whole lot of folks on on let's say the right specifically is that while we are sitting down here having these ideological discussions people are dying so while we sit down with ideological discourse we need to realize that there's a woman with breast cancer, there's a man with testicular cancer, that until we have a stopgap measure, until we decide exactly what we're going to do, something has to be done. And right you know, now, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I, I completely agree with you. And I, I understand the concepts behind the Affordable Care Act. I agree with it. I just heavily disagree with the design of it. That's fine. But you know what? If you disagree with the design of that Affordable Care Act, then, um, then, to put it bluntly, you have to elect people that shares your share your point of view. That is not I've what has trying. occurred. I know that <laughs> uh, the, the, the the people that that share my point of view hadn't gotten elected either. So we are left in the middle with people who want something in the middle. But the difference between my side and your side is that my side has decided that we would abide by the rules until we can change it. Your side, or not you specifically necessarily, but many on your side, their intent is to destroy it. And in the process of doing this, people get hurt. I and, can't agree with that. 
Um, Let me ask you this, my friend. If there's a woman who had leukemia, okay? If yeah. there's a woman who had leukemia and the right and and her her new insurance bill would be less than it was on before Obamacare, and uh, and not only that, but her plan was on 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 Obamacare as well, and she makes an ad to convince the rest of America that somehow she is worse off than before Obamacare. If that well, isn't sabotage, I don't know what is. Well, guess what? Um, while she may be paying less, my bill actually went up by about four hundred a month. That's and you know you know something and if there that happened to a certain percentage of people, and we know who that certain percentage of people are. That certain percentage of people are those people who had most of most of them fall into the category that they didn't have a plan that met the specification of minimum health care, which means you had good health care until you needed it. And you may have thought going to the hospital a few times was okay, but if you had ever gotten testicular cancer, it would have been a different story. But let me let me tell you, uh, I, I, I want to answer something for you be, be, beforehand, because you your real question, because i got to go to another call, but your specific question was, what is not working? What is not working is a Congress that prevents a highway bill to get through. What is um, not... No, no, these are serious tasks. I mean, no, one no, of the... Re what you're doing is taking a look at what the president wants to do. You want his stuff passed, and you're getting upset that the Republicans are, are resisting. Not really. Not really. A highway bill in all previous Congresses. Listen well, because this is one of the things that we have a problem with in, in the country at this time. There were certain bills that pre-Obama, no matter how much intransigent was in whether the Democratic Congress or a Republican Congress, there was never a problem in getting certain bills through. There was a concerted effort documented that nothing was going to get through for this president. That, that is, and and what, what I would like you to do, Paul, and I'm going to have to move on from you, but what I'd like to do is for us to be able to have a discussion on an honest platform where we come out and say the Republicans honestly had a concerted effort to simply ensure that this president got nothing done. I got to let you go, Paul. I, please stay and keep calling me or keep listening because we'll, I, we need to keep these types of conversations going without a problem, okay? Okay. Thank Thanks you, buddy. Me. Hey, John. Talk to me, John. Yeah, good yeah, good evening, Roberto. How are you doing, Great my friend? Great coverage from from Detroit. I was following everything you wrote, and it was it was phenomenal. Uh, it was great to hear uh, Reverend Barber's speech over an hour. Fantastic uh, interviews with Ed Keith Makita oh, yes. and Doc Holbrook. Also fantastic. And you know, I have so, I, I, ha I have some more that you're gonna see. But I just couldn't get all that stuff processed, but I have some um, that's coming out, John. With those who have rebuilt, you know, the message that comes across the standard media is somehow Detroit is this degenerate city, and these degenerate people who are just letting this city go 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 by the wayside because the corporatocracy as law has left, and these people can't do anything for themselves. I've met people at this convention who came in, people that are there fixing the blight, people that are there that are turning the blight into something. Uh, you have uh, 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 Makita, who's out there trying to empower young people to get engaged. You have Doc, who's gro going around the city, making sure that people actually f be a part of government as opposed to just let it government, bad government, run them. Uh, it, it was, you know, like I said, there are problems there. But when you saw the vibrancy of the people, I, I, I haven't done the video of the uh, march yet, the, 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 the rally, because I really want to do that video justice. Because it was, we had a couple of um, people come in, uh, uh, some environmentalists come in. We had the nurses. We, I mean, we had a whole lot of people. And I just want to do it justice. And I didn't just want to release something, you know, just like that. So I'm glad that you liked it, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. That was fantastic. Uh, I, I want to speak a little bit about Terry and uh, this thing about him sending troops supposedly to the border. Uh huh. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if you've you've yes, been following this Yes, I heard it. Yes. Today. Yes. Yeah, uh, I just think it's it's 
just absolutely ridiculous what he's doing. And just on a constitutional basis, he has no constitutional authority to do this. I mean, the, the Constitution, this is from Think Progress. It says the Constitution's supremacy clause prohibits states from interfering with areas of regulation that have been preempted by the federal government. And the U.S. Supreme Court has already invalidated provisions of state law that seek to, to legislate on immigration reform. Washington and Lee University law professor Margaret Hu told Think Progress that the provision could, could suffer uh, similar constitutional problems, particularly because it interferes with national security and the uh, Department of Homeland Security policies also. Uh, and so I it's think crazy. Obama really needs to put his foot down and say, "This is you have no authority to do this. He's not going to do it. He's and, not going to do it. And I, I hope it happens soon. I, let me tell you, I don't think Obama is going to do anything about trying to stop Perry. I think he's going to let Perry go ahead and, and just play out and act like a, like the crazy man that he is. I mean, I find, you know, I, I'm still trying to figure out what is the National Guard going down there to do, uh, check the pockets of the little kids. I mean, it, what are they going to do? Get in between a hug, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I I really don't understand where you know this is. This, however, is the fault. I'm glad that you're talking about it, right? I'm really glad that you're talking about it, uh, John. But think about: Did you watch the third, the, the uh, channel third? Well, whatever channel ABC, CBS, NBC local channel is at uh, in in your town in in San Antonio. Nobody came out and said what you just said. Nobody came out and told the American population, as the news reporters that they should be, that what Perry is about to do is cons unconstitutional. They didn't. None of these reporters came out and told uh, Americans that the reality is immigration at the border or, or is almost non-existent, other than the refugee crisis that we currently have. Yes, we still have the smugglers, but now that Colorado allows the marijuana and other things, even that crime rate in Colorado is down. No, you know, we don't get reporting anymore. That is one of the things that, you know, um, when, let me tell you, I, I'm Wayne, I'm coming to you next, but let me tell you what, what's going on here um, that, that's so disconcerting, John. When we went to Detroit, right, and uh, we said that, when I say we, I'm talking about Netroots Nation, said uh, they were going to be participating in this big rally to help Detroit. Not only about them not shutting off the water, and by the way, they decided not to shut off the water any longer, uh, but that we were going to participate in, 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 in the rallies with these guys. And, you know, there was this chant that said, all you guys now that came into town, you are now, you're, you're now Detroiters. You know, you are now from Detroit. And it was symbolic because you, you listen to them talk and they say, you know, our city has seen dire straits for all these times. And the only time you see it on TV is whenever something bad happens. Nobody talk about what, had, what, what folks actually did to us what the corporation did to us. Nobody spoke about how they're using the water, uh, the, this water crisis to take people's lands away or to get them to have to move. Uh, nobody, nobody's really telling the story. So what they kept on telling us as bloggers out there is they're like, look, the main media is not going to tell, the, 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 not main, I don't even want to call them main media. The traditional media is not going to be telling you the true story. They give you a picture of what they want you to know. But could you please tell our stories? That's what they said. And I'm talking about not people next to each other. I mean, when they found out what we as bloggers really do around the country, it was like, tell the story. There's a young man, I don't remember his name right now. He's running in, I don't remember what congressional district in, 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 um, in uh, Michigan. He came out, state district. He, he came out and he said, tell the story. He friended me on Facebook and he said, Whatever information that I need out there, I'll pass it on to you because we need the story told. Nobody's here is telling the story. Nobody here is telling what's going on. And we have a media. It's a non-functional media that's intent on keeping many of the people on a storyline in order to keep most of Americans as puppets. You know, I mean, it, 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 you know, that's why um, Roxy asked me earlier, she said, Egberto, um, you said you were in Detroit? And she looked at me like, is it Detroit? It's like, yeah, it was empowering, though. It was empowering. You know, it was empowering. So, anyhow, uh, so talk to me, John. What else? 
Well, I think there has been a little bit of pushback. I mean, uh, Joaquin Castro, you know, has, has said that the children fleeing violence in Central America are seeking uh, out our border agents. They are not trying to evade them. Why send soldiers to uh, confront these kids? And so, I mean, the, the Latino community uh, has has are, is definitely against this. Right. And so, uh, you know, it, it's. I mean, people are going to speak out and. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure exactly. You know what what Obama is going to do, but he really should. You know, step forward because I mean, I've never heard of, the, of any any governor ever doing this, and you know, I, I I like to follow history, and I think this is kind of unprecedented. What uh, what Perry's doing? Everybody knows that the federal government runs the border, runs the border, yeah. and yes. immigration. So uh, I, I wish he would do something. He really needs to to take control. I mean, you know, he, he won two elections. Perry Perry is just a dream of his to ever win an election. You know. <laughs> I, let, let me tell you. I hope he does something. I don't see based on the way uh, he operates. I figure he's going to say that's what Perry wants me to do. Perry wants me to engage, and I'm not going to engage down. That's what I honestly think. The president has in mind, but uh, I'm going to keep you hot. John, let me run to Wayne, and then I'll come back to you. Wayne, you are on, my dear brother. Talk to me. What's up, Ernesto? Egberto, Egberto, ¿por qué no puedes decir mi nombre? Egberto. I, I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> That's but, uh, all right. I, I want to give kudos to John. Thank uh, you. Th- th- just before we go, uh, before we get into this, John, you, 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 you was right on it, but... There's a thing that we have to realize here in Texas, John. Perry uh, has never been my governor. I want to say that right off the bat. He's never been my governor because he's just a statue. (laughs) Really? That's a statue. That's all he is. What do you mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is Perry, uh, what, what has Perry done for the state of Texas? First of all, let me say this here. When Perry came into office, everything in Texas was already in place, all gas, anything that creates jobs already here. He had nothing to do with creating any jobs. The only thing that I've seen Perry do is hard money. And then and, and, and with his, uh, what is that, the uh, Texas Partnership or something? Right, where he, where he gives six, a lot of money to businesses, yes. Yeah, give a lot of money to businesses, uh, 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 hard money. That's all I've ever seen him do. Uh, as far as creating jobs, he's never created a job. Uh, all business creates jobs on its own. A uh, gas business creates jobs on its own. Perry didn't have anything to do with those. And and, and from that, uh, as we stretch out over the bad state of Texas and in and, and, and everything else comes up where you get other jobs, Burger King's, uh, 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 all these other jobs. Wayne, you're correct. Keep your thought. I, I, I forgot to do my call in. It's the, the, this is KPFT 90.1 FM. Uh, it's a call in show, folks. The number is 713-526-5738 or 713-526-KPFT. And Roxy says it this way. 713-JAM-KPFT. Okay, come on back in, Wayne. All right. So so we, we get a lot of service jobs in Texas because this, the state is so vast. Right. So Perry doesn't create jobs. Jobs create themselves here in the state of Texas. But in, in Perry's, in Perry's uh, 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 system... He thinks he's creating jobs. He don't create any jobs. But like I, I, I know a lady said that one time, she has three jobs. She has three jobs to make a living. <laughs> well, you know, if you're getting paid seven twenty-five an hour, you need three you jobs. Up, you you add up twenty-one. I mean, three jobs at seven twenty-five an hour. I think that's about twenty-two fifty. An hour? No, that's twenty-one uh, seventy-five. It's not even okay. twenty-two dollars. <laughs> twenty-one seventy-five an hour. That's a livable wage, <laughs> okay? But uh, I think I called in a couple of weeks ago, and and, and I made this statement, and I'm gonna make it again. Okay. John, you pay John. I hope you're still listening. You pay attention to it. Yeah, he's here. I, yeah, I know you, you. You think that President Obama is not paying attention to Rick Perry? He don't have to pay attention to Rick Perry. 
Rick Perry is going to fall flat on his face <laughs> because Rick Perry doesn't understand the economy. He does not understand America. What he understands is succession. And when you understand only succession, you can't move this country forward. <clears throat> so, therefore, there's nothing that Rick Perry has to say to anybody. He can go to Iowa. He can go all over the country. And there's still going to be that thing that follows him. Oops. <laughs> there's still going to be that thing that follows him. Oops. When you look at Rick Perry, when you look at Rick Perry, and he sent, now, he's talking about sending a 1,000 troops to the border. Federal government is supposed to send troops where they go. Right. Now, the president came here and told Rick Perry, he told him this. He said, you got the, you got the authority to send the National Guard, which he is in Texas, to the border. Now, why would you, as Rick Perry, he don't want to accept $9 billion that our taxpayer dollars pay for here to expand Medicare. Medicaid. But he wants med Medicare. Mm -hmm. but, but he wants to send 1,000 National Guards to the border to bully little kids. And then he's going to ask the, go the federal government for emergency relief to do it. I mean, it's and amazing. And he won't, he won't support the Medicaid expansion to Obamacare. It, it's, it is, look... It is immoral, as as Reverend Barber said, and I I don't know if you it, go to my website if you get a chance, my dear friend. It's uh, uh, egbertowillies dot com, e g b e r t o w i l l i e s dot com. I have the Reverend Barber's speech there. It was wonderful, and he has a part in there where he talks about the immorality of how we've uh, performed as uh, you know as as far as the policies are concerned in this country. But, Wayne, is there anything else you want to add to your statement, sir? Yeah, I just want to uh, just add to this one thing. Well, we're talking about the, uh, uh, I'm, I want to say about the uh, big rally that was supposed to happen this weekend about the uh, the immigrants. Or the, 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 it the, happened. Yeah, it happened. I, but I know. it didn't happen, too, right? Right. Well, I, I, Let's I, say it happened, but it didn't happen, right? Right. I, so, I, I tell you what, I was... I, I wasn't in Houston. I was in Detroit. But I heard that it occurred on a bridge in Conroe or somewhere out there. I don't oh, know. Well, what, what occurred in, in, on a bridge in Conroe? If, they, if, it, if anything occurred in Texas it, on a bridge in Conroe, uh, I haven't seen it. And I live in Houston, Texas. So now what, what I'm saying is they went all around the country. They went all around the country where these people were supposed to be this 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 big mass rally. Right. Was supposed to and be. And there was no no big rally is what you're saying. And, and there was I mean there was nobody that showed up. I got you. I got it, you. It was nobody that showed up. So what you know it it, it it's a uh, it's just one of those fox well, again. Look. It's one of those fox premature things that they do when they. Well. I hear when, you, Wayne. When Rush Limbaugh, right. and, and, I, and I know this is a family show, but I'm going to say it. No, don't say it if it's a, it's a family show. His, when he gets his rocks up in his eye and, and he ain't taking his drugs, you understand what I I'm got, saying? I got you, sir. But look, Wayne, it was <laughs> okay, a pleasure, right. and I keep listening and keep calling, my friend, okay? All right, man. You all have right. a good one. Thank, cool. thank you all for right. calling, sir. Okay, Mary. Yes. How are you doing, my dear? I'm fabulous. Well, beef. Okay, did you read in the paper Sunday that only 27 people signed up for the Affordable Health Care Act, and it all goes to Harris County Hospital District for Care? Mm. And the sad thing is hospitals, especially small community hospitals in Texas, are closing up. Right. They're hemorrhaging money. Right. And Rick Perry... You know, this is a dying go to Hades moment for anyone who believes in Rick Perry. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, this is the number one thing. He fights the EPA over pollution, but he didn't tell President Obama when Bastrap caught on fire. Right. That the reason Bastrap really caught on fire was right. because the forest was dying from that coal plant on 71. And because EPA is not being strong enough, every time they build shutters to meet EPA standards, they up 
the production of coal for those coal plants for right. power. Mm-hmm. And the forest was drying up, so all somebody had to do was just drop a spark or something and it caught on fire. And who was the first person that president, I mean, that uh, Governor Perry called? The president for help. You know, when the fertilizer plant caught on fire and blew up and only had a million dollar policy and it destroyed, I don't, know, I don't know how many homes, I don't know exactly, but it destroyed a lot of homes. And who was, who was taking care of business in Texas? You know something, Mary? I am so impressed with what you have just said. You brought in the environment, you brought in uh, welfare for for the American citizens. You brought in safety for the American citizens, all in one call, all deficiencies of Rick Perry. Now, don't, the, the, don't forget about the air pollution because we live near it in Houston. The ship well, people. you know, there's a thing called Cancer Alley in right in our area, the Bay, the, the Bay Town area, I believe, off of uh, Pasadena. Don't forget the Pasadena, Pasadena area, where where all those chemicals are there. So yes, I I I know that. But what what I'm saying is. You're pretty, you're pretty clear. And my question really is more about your friends. I'm not concerned about you. I'm pretty sure you're going out there and you're voting appropriately. You're voting the way you need to vote to ensure that your safety is held up. You're, 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 voted, you're voting in your own interest. What about your friends? I tell all my friends, I've been on the bus talking to young people. But the problem is, like what the young man said earlier, we have a media problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you do you ever hear the media talk about? They didn't start talking about global warming until all these incidents started to occur. It's cold in the summer, right? <laughs> Spring <laughs> and all these uh, flooding everywhere. That's when everybody got concerned, right? You know, they started kind of believing that this might be true, right? And it, it's just sad that we live in a society where we are dubbed down. Then we have a media that even what, why I want to know who got shot and who got killed on the morning news every morning. Thank I want to know about what's relevant for us having a great state because because if our state keeps going like it's going, and I'm a transplant for 35 years here, mm-hmm. I don't see myself retiring here because this state is like the young man said. He is, we don't have anybody who represents the common man in politics in the federal government. We got Cruz Senator, <laughs> we got Cronin Senator. They don't represent us. We got a governor. He doesn't represent us. Matter of fact, you know when uh Mayor White ran for mayor I, he ran yes. it for the environmental yes. and he sued the state of Texas. Right. And that was the first time in the history of Texas that a state governing uh, organization, which I don't know the name of it, but what they do, they handle all the the uh, right. That is a stuff. Texas represented yeah. a corporation, and I'm tired of corporate health welfare. Right. We're dying having cancer. I mean, I work in healthcare. I meet too many 34 year old women with breast cancer. Right. And it's, it's all environmental, mm. and in Dallas, in that area. I met from Fort Worth. I met three young women with colon cancer. One was twenty-eight. The other two was in their early twenties. I wonder, like, we really need to start studying where we move to. You just can't buy right. house. You better go do some research and make sure where you're living is a healthy place to live. Are you and, here in Houston, Mary? Huh? Are you here in Houston? Yes, yes. Yeah. I've been in Houston 35 years. Right. I, I read the paper, and I do my research, and I listen. Well, and it, I, it's not learning the right things. I don't watch Fox News because it, it just irates me. Right. Well, I, I tell you, the reason I, I asked you that, and uh, et cetera, is because, um, believe me, listening to you and the way you're saying these things, Actually, you know, it gives me hope. It really does give me hope because one of the things that there's there's a young man that I was talking to before we got on the radio here, and what he said was like, oh, it wasn't a young man, it was a young lady who said, don't you get tired? Nobody is really listening. Nobody listen. And 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 what I said is, look, I'm an activist. I don't get tired. I don't get bored. 
I don't get depressed. I just keep moving on one person at a time. And they said, well, that, that takes forever. And I'm like, no, it doesn't take forever. Look at this. Look at this, Mary. You know, you know the material. You know what's the reality. You know the truth. I do. Roxy does. You know what that means? That means that the three of us have in material for every person that we speak to. We have given them the necessary information to move on and multiply what we know, what they know, but and you move know forward. What? They have infiltrated the educators. Yes, they have. Texas. But you know what? You go in the Baylor College of Medicine right. and go through their parking lot, guess what channel is on every Fox TV? News, yes. And they get money from NIH, which is our tax dollars. Right. They're supposed to be the guys taking care of our health. They're the ones that right. really know the truth. You know what, Mary? Well, they play Fox News. Mary? Oh, every channel. <laughs> Mary, I'm going to have to go to the That's to okay. Bruce, but let me tell you, I appreciate your call. I hope you keep listening, and I, I hope will. you keep calling, because let me tell you, like I tell you, what you've just, all the stuff that you talk about here and here, please make sure and be telling all your friends and the oh, bus and everywhere. I, I, because I educate all my nursing friends. Right. Uh, and they go, how do you know so much? I read. Uh, you read, and that's what it's going to take. <laughs> so, I right, listen, you've, you've made my day, okay? I'm, I'm glad because people are actually, I, I know people are listening out there. So, thank you very much, and you have a wonderful night, man. And you too. Thank take you. Take care Bye-bye. now. Bye-bye. Bruce. Hello, Roberto. How are you doing, my can, friend? Can you, uh, doing fine. Talk to me. You just mentioned that in Conroe there was a protest against the immigrants coming into the country. Right. I just wanted to let you know that it was the Democratic Party that had a anti-protest there, and also the uh, Montgomery County Now uh, Association, the National Organization for Women. Excellent. And they were trying to let people know that there is compassion in this county, and that we do take care of our, we'd like to save the kids. I love to hear that, Bruce. So you're telling me that uh, after they saw you guys, they made sure that they didn't make their Hayden face shown? <laughs> well, they did try. Uh-huh. Uh, there, we have a special election here for Senate District 4. Mm -hmm. uh, Crichton and Toe were on the bridge. Right. They were trying to make some political hay out of let's hate the immigrants. Right. You know? like uh, send your mama back home and that sort of thing. Right. I don't think it really happened. Uh, I haven't heard if they're going to start another uh, protest later on in a couple of weeks or so, but if they do, we'll be there. Ex Look, Bruce, you are doing great great things. The chairman of the Democratic Party in, 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 Montgomery, in Montgomery County. County. Look, uh, that that is great, and I know those 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 young kids are happy that – they actually saw a smiling face, so thank you, my dear friend. Is there anything else you need to tell me, sir? Well, I did make it to uh, Sunday to Michael Collier's uh, event right there in your neighborhood. Excellent. How was Andrew that? Roof, and there was Sam Houston and Steve Brown, and lots of people were there, so I'm glad he's off for his two-week tour to tell people about uh, his qualifications for controller. Well, that is that is great. Seems like he has a lot to talk about. So, look, thank you very much, Bruce, my You're friend. Great, man. You have a great one, sir. Thank you, Berto. Take care now. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye. Teresa. Hi. Th you know, th bless Mary. Mary, I would love to meet you. Uh, that was just... Was that great or what, um, uh, Teresa? That gives me hope. I've been doing some block walking uh -huh. and... You know, uh, I said, hi, there's a big election coming up in November for governor. They, uh, no, I said, there's a big election coming up. They said, when? When is the election? You know, <laughs> I talked to another person. I said, you know, what's the issue that's biggest on your mind? What, what do you think is the most important thing? Right. And she said, uh, smoking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I guess it you know, was really important to her, but, I but mean, I'm thinking education, but jobs, you know what? You know. <laughs> but guess what? Oh, guess what, what, Teresa? We are doing our job in, first of all, from a station like this. Folks, don't forget, this is kpft.org, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So, I mean, we're doing our job. So, I mean, the good thing about it is that's what it's all about, you know? I mean... Uh, learning one person at a time, and right, and and I think that it's it's great when to hear other people that are adding one or two pieces to the puzzle, right, uh, 
or as 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 Robert Muhammad would say, you know, connecting the dots. Well, yeah. Uh, let me say one other thing. Yes. Well, I'll make another point. Uh, earlier you had uh, a man on that was talking about, uh, you know, government. And people are concerned about, you know, government not doing well with our money. Right. I think that people need to investigate a little bit, you know, what these people do. Like, if you have somebody that is taking care of plants and they handle pesticides, you want somebody that licenses them and tests them. Right. You don't want somebody, like I have a person on the street behind me that had a bunch of bees, and some pest control guy from next door said, oh, let me just spray those bees. He probably killed 100,000 bees. Wow. You know, what he did, if it wasn't against the law, should have been against the law. He should have known better. Right. Um, If you go in to have your hair cut, uh, those people are licensed. Right. If, if I have my nails done, these people are licensed. I mean, there are people that you elect. Like, a, if I put if I put a gallon of gas in my car, I want a gallon. Exactly. I don't want less than a gallon. I mean, there are people that hold government offices that do important things. I want somebody that is handling my food. I don't want them. Unlicensed, you know, coming out of the bathroom and not washing your hands. But you know what, Teresa, that is why what we are saying that we want to go out there and do is so important. Because that's not what the media is going to tell folks. The media just say, oh, they want regulations, and they make regulations a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Now, the way you just expressed it, you know, everybody wants that. You know, I mean, um, my sister is a pediatrician in California, Mm -hmm. and uh, once a kid got hurt, because of the measurements for anesthesia. There are laws that, that govern how these things are applied, yeah. you know, and Life it's and called death. regulations. It's what keep people alive or what prevents people from getting hurt. Now, a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, we had someone that was in the position of, of uh, district uh, clerk. Right. And he automated it so you could file online and check things on check the check the status online he got rid of a couple uh, like six figure extraneous like friends of the previous person in that right. office he moved the district clerk's offices and saved us a whole bunch of money but people i don't think paid any attention to what this person did so the next election they came and they voted somebody else and i'm thinking you know, let's pay attention to what what the office is for. I'd, I'd like more people to talk about uh, what the lieutenant governor does. Right. Um, I mean, I, it's I the most important job understand. in Texas. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, agricultural commissioner, uh, you know, railroad commissioner. Most people don't realize. Oh, they think, well, it has to do with railroads. Well, it has to do primarily with royalties for uh, for mineral rights. Right. I mean, that's a lot of money, and they're taking those people running for that office are making, you know, big you know, decisions. Political, I mean, but they're getting donations right. from oil companies. Why? Why? Because maybe they might be making decisions that benefit certain businesses, Absolutely. you know? Uh, so, anyway, I just thank you very much for this discussion, and, and perhaps sometime you will talk about what some of these office holders do well i tell you it's going to be even better than that we're going to have some of them in here and you know uh actually talking i i I hope to i'm I'm sending out something to vote the um the the state controller of both parties to see if they'll sit down and have a little chat here good bravo bravo i I would like to know what the i'm really curious as to what the lieutenant governor does no problem we'll try to get leticia van den put but remember that that's the most important uh head position here in texas is more powerful than the governor (laughs) well we shall see yes ma'am but thank you have to say thank you teresa thank you have a good one bye well, John, I'm near the close of the show. Um, uh, any other input that you'd like to make before we go into that little time? Yeah, I, I just want to talk a little bit more about Perry. And there is a question of Mark about, and you, you referenced this earlier, about who is actually going to pay for this. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
it, it's going to cost about twelve mil, uh, million dollars per month. Mm-hmm. And, twelve uh, million you know, a month. As far, as far as I'm, I know, I don't think the. I mean, there hasn't there hasn't been a, a you know, say so from the the federal government saying they're going to pay for right. it. So, I mean, this is something that the, the Texas taxpayers should consider. Right. You know. I mean. So. Well, you know, sometimes anyway, when you're show, and I, I recommend everybody go to EgbertoWillies dot com to to check out all of his coverage of Net Roots Nation. It was fantastic. It was the best coverage of any other website and best coverage on Daily Coast. Look, I appreciate so. that. I I really appreciate that plug, um, John. I mean, I I, I tell you, we had. Like like I was telling Roxy before we got on air, we had a very great time out there, mostly because, you know, a lot of times uh, conventioners go into a town and they, they kind of segregate themselves from the town. It was sort of all-encompassing. You had people from the town in the convention and otherwise. The only sad part about it is that I really wanted to go into some of the towns. I didn't get a chance to go into the, you know, get out of the downtown area or whatever. But um, <laughs> it's funny because at Peace, Makita said, you don't really have to go too far to see the kind of stuff that we're going through here. And I'm like, yeah, but, you know, I don't, you know, they're, they're from going from one conference to another and then trying to get a blog out, and it was kind of hectic. But it was, like I said, I enjoyed it, and I'm actually I'm glad that, uh, you know, other people kind of saw some of it through, you know, through our eyes um, out there. So, John, look, thank you very much for being a part of the call as usual, my dear friend. Absolutely. Have a good Keep one. It up. Thank you, sir. Well, folks, this is we're coming to the end of the show. Please do remember that this is a community radio. So we do want to ask you to always be a part of us. Uh, we're going to be going. Roxy, when are we going into the um, to the period for the drive? The fun drive starts actually um, July 27th and it goes into August 9th. Oh, so, so that means our next show is a fun drive. Because today yes, is the yes, twenty first. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so next week. Actually, no, no. Start. You said it's the twenty second or the twenty first. When does it start? No, today is the twenty first. So it starts it tar- tomorrow. It's, no, no, no. It starts the twenty seventh. The twenty seventh. And it goes until um, August 9th. Okay, so our next show isn't one then. Seven plus twenty one is twenty eight. Oh yeah, it is one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're okay. we're going into fun drive. So we're going into fun drive. So folks, I hope that you uh, call and make a pledge during the show. I'll try to have something special for you, so that uh, you know, even though there won't be call ins directly to the show, I don't. I'm not sure how we're going to run that yet, Roxy. But we want you to call in and please make pledges. That is how we keep politics done right on air. That is how we keep all the other shows on air. That is how we keep Roxy, who is our premier. Ingeniera on air. So, folks, this is the end of the show. This is Politics Done Right. I'm Egberto Willis. Thank you very much for being with me. One more night. Thank you very much for listening to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willis. You can personally reach me by sending an email to egberto at politicsdoneright.com. Remember, Egberto is spelled E-G-B-E-R-T-O. Change starts with you. 90.1 KPFT gives you information not tainted by corporate interest. Please visit kpft.org and contribute. Let's ensure continued access to real information and news remain available to all. Again, Thank you very much for listening to Politics Done Right.